It's uh, just all right, listen, man. You, you just got done calling a uh, a barn burner, an absolute <laughs> barn burner, Rob. Um, Minnesota, Michigan State. I think everybody and their mother thought that Michigan State was going to come out after that last performance against Northwestern and beat the living daylights out of Richard Pitino in, in Minnesota. Yeah. But ultimately, you know what? Minnesota's the better team today. They're 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 more talented. They're they're put together well. They're older. Um, well, maybe not older because Josh Langford's still like thirty-two. Um, <laughs> but but everybody else, they're they're older. They they had the best player on the court by far, Marcus Carr. And tonight, Liam Robbins was the second best player. Yeah, it wasn't even close. Um, I was surprised because I, I thought Michigan State at least did some good things against Wisconsin. You know, and Wisconsin the. They don't follow that up by losing the, to Maryland tonight, but I, I was surprised because usually with with Tom Izzo led groups, and this was the case when I played. This is the case when Mateen Cleves played. This is the case forever. Like usually after a loss, he rallies the troops. They crush the next team on the glass. Yep. They get out in transition. Like there's like pillars of what Michigan State has done over the last 25 years with him as the coach. They don't do any of this stuff. Like, they look like they're disinterested. Their energy level is horrible. Offensively, you know, Coach Izzo went to a lot of pick and roll with Cassius. That's fine. But right now, I think you got to find a way to reinvent yourself because their, their offense is – How do you play, Rob? What, what do you If you're Tom Izzo here watching him, you've seen him a few times here, um, how do you play? Because they don't, have, they don't have a natural point guard. We've seen that. Foster Lawyer's not a – Frontline point guard. He, he, right. he, honestly, he's a good backup. That's what he is. And, and Rocket Watts, we've talked about him a little bit. How do you utilize? Because you have to, you you have to gear your offense around Rocket Watts to me. You have to tell Watts like, and, and Tom Izzo has tried to get him to be more of a pass first point guard. I don't think you should. Yeah. I think he's so messed up in the head off of thinking I have to pass. I have to like, dude, be yourself. Yeah. He needs to be Rocket Watts. And I think they need to they need to get more ball movement. It's so much just stagnated pick and roll, and like, dude, teams just load up, and they're daring guys to shoot. Like they're they're, they're daring Aaron Henry to shoot. Aaron Henry, I'm really concerned about because he from a you said it. You said it's confidence. You're he, worried about. I've seen it waver last yeah. year at times. You were like, man, he he could go the other way here. Now they they figured it out. It seemed like by the end of the year, but. This could get really bad. They, they need to really reassess some things. They need to just play hard. <laughs> like if Coach Izzo's coaching effort, that that's they have they have bigger problems in their offense. They can't guard anybody either. I mean, yeah. it was Carr tonight, Trice the other night, uh, Boo Booey a couple weeks ago. I mean, it's it's not just you know Cash's missing casters on the offensive end. Not that he was a great defender, but like they're getting torched by every guard they play against. And that's like even when Michigan State's had offensive issues in the past. You can kind of count on them to guard people and, and at least kind of stay in the game. I mean, in a couple of years ago, this game might have been, you know, 61-58 or something like that. They got blown out because they can't guard and they can't score. I mean, it's just – I think we kind of got a little bit fooled by them when they beat Duke early and said, all right, you know, they're, they're going to kind of come out and, and you know, they're, they're going to miss Cash, they're going to miss Tillman, but they, they win at Duke. Obviously, Duke probably not as good as we thought they were. And so it's pretty much just that, a, a, a closer-than-expected win over Notre Dame, the, you know, the 10-point win. And outside of that, they've, they haven't done anything. And so, I, you know, I think that going into the season, we had expectations that they'd be, you know, they'd take a step back, borderline top 20 team. And then it, we just – we I, I mean, I, me personally, I bought into them off that win over Duke, and I thought they would be suddenly a top five, top 10 team and trust in Izzo, that whole thing. And they're just – they're not that. And and in a Big Ten in a year like this, I mean, are they a top five, six, seven no, team in the Big Ten? Today. Not no right way. now. No way. They're like nine today. Yeah. I mean, seriously, you can make a case they're not in the top eight right now. Now, again, this thing is going to go up, down, and around. Rob said, he's like, I heard you say, you know, you wouldn't be surprised if if, if the winner of the Big Ten is six losses. Um, you know, it's going to be all about – you know, timing a little bit of, of when you face certain teams that are maybe coming out of quarantines that have players out, whatnot, uh, health, and, and and really your schedule, to be honest, and how it's how it's laid out. And if you've got this easy stretch at the end and you can withstand some of the body blows early, um, I, you know, Wisconsin, listen, I, I was talking to Dosser earlier today and we were saying like, Mark Turgeon, back in the hot seat. 
right? Like he's going to be back in the hot seat here. They're not, they're no good. The only team they're better at then is, is Penn state and Nebraska. And they go out and they beat Wisconsin and Madison. Like what the hell is going on there? No, it's, it's all over the place to finish on Michigan state. And then we'll get to, to Wisconsin and Maryland. I think at times for Tom Izzo, their best offense has been put it on the rim and let our beast He'll get it. Let our studs just dominate the game physically. Like think about my freshman year. They played Raymar Morgan at the three, Goran Sutan at the four, and yep. Drew Namick at the five. And then they brought dudes like Marquise Gray and and Edong Eba. I mean, they had like they had like six dudes who yeah. were just more physical, bigger, stronger than everybody else in the Big Ten. And they would just beat you up. And, and you know, there's nobody like Adrian Payne on this team where he's just gonna go and physically dominate a game or, nope. or uh, Derek Nix or I mean think about how many or even like a Xavier there's no pros Just Rob there's me. no pros like I'm tired the Aaron Henry is a first round pick talk I said it to Doster earlier today I'm like why where how I don't see it I, I'm with you he, he probably I guess I hate to say this about a kid but you, you probably should have left like because you do have you have serious flaws in your game you know yeah and, no doubt Go to the NBA <laughs> before they just now he's got more on his shoulders and it's the more eyes are on him and it's just that's not his that's not his game. I'm with you. I think they should just let Rocket Watts go. Yeah. Let him yeah. let him go. Let him be the guy. I mean, trying let to stifle what he does. Like, you know, right. high volume, whatever yep. it is. Like he's gonna have some games where he's three for seventeen. You're mm-hmm. not gonna win those, but when he's on, just just let him attack. Yep. He's the one guy that I mean, if you give him the ball, he can beat his, his guy off the bounce, he can get to the rim, he can make shots. Just let him go, and, and everyone else can play off of him. Trying to make him a pass-first guy is just – it's its not working. And, and, I mean, and I think, you know, a lot of us knew it probably wouldn't, wasn't going to work to kind of change the game that he's played his entire life and, and kind of fill the shoes of Cassius Winston. It was it was uh, kind of amazing. a recipe for disaster. It's amazing that, that these schools like Michigan State didn't have a succession plan. And we're going we're gonna to talk in a little bit about succession plans. But how do you not have a succession it's a good plan? tease, by the way. That's nice. It's a great tease. Great I'm tease. I'm impressed. That's your right? bet. Pretty good. How do you not have one for Cassius Winston? Seriously, how do you not have a guy ready to go as a, a, a better point guard than Rocket Watts, who's not one, or Foster Lawyer, who frankly just isn't good enough? And he's not really a point guard either, to be honest. No, he's a two. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that It's question. the smallest two-guard in the history of high major I think, basketball. I think if I did, I'd be coaching a college basketball team, but I, I don't know why they don't have a point guard. Um, all right, Wisconsin. Borzell, are you, you concerned or not really? Do you just feel like, you know what, they're going to be what they are anyway. They're going to lose these games. They'll win enough because of their experience, because of their balance. Uh, they just weren't – honestly, Maryland just out them in the second half. I know, Rob, you didn't really see the second half at all, but – they just brought it to them, and they dominated in the glass. They played harder. They played tougher, and Wisconsin wasn't getting easy shots. Yeah, I mean, I think Wisconsin – like, uh, the, the one thing I am concerned about is Nate Reavers um, because he's just – the past, I think, six, seven games, he's just disappeared. Um, and, and I think, you know, toward the end of last year, when they got it going, it was him and, and, and Potter on the inside. Both can play outside. They can play around the rim. And that was just – it was really hard to guard for a lot of teams. And and now he's struggling, and you know I don't know what it is, but he's not making shots. Uh, he had eight points today, um, which you know surprisingly I think is maybe his most in the last three or four weeks. And so he's the one thing I'm concerned about. I'm not all that concerned with them. I do think that that today, if you ask me to pick who's going to win the Big Ten, I still might pick them. Um, it's just they were never going to be as good as they were for the final month last year. But in in a in the way the Big Ten is right now, I, I still think with their experience, the way they make shots. I mean, we saw against against Louisville. If they're making shots, they you know they can run anyone out of the gym. Yeah. Um. And so I I still think they're fine, and, and they still might be the best team in the league. I just I think Reavers has to turn it around. I'm still highly unsure on them. You know, <laughs> you always were. Listen, Rob was always like I ranked him like number seven or eight in the preseason, and Rob looks at me. He's like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Just look at the roster and what they did." The second half of last year, like they're old. Because it's burned into my brain, them getting killed at Mackey to a, an average Purdue team. And <laughs> it's like, all Rob remembers. No, the no, games no. at Mackey. Well, games where I was like, they're not good last yeah. year. And they they were. weren't. Yeah. Like, so I, they're going to lose games like this, but they're also going to find ways to beat people when you're like, there's no way. Like, I would have never thought they'd beat Michigan State 
after Michigan State loses a game like they do. And they, they've got some, like, Demetri Trice has been around the block, and so's Brad Davis. And those guys are experienced. So yeah. I think your point, as much as I hate to give you credit for this, is very valid at the start of the year where you're like, experience is going to win. And even yeah, though it's proven out with everybody almost. No, so I far. know. And even though they're maybe not the most talented team in the Big Ten, because of that, because of their experience, they, they, I, they, they are the favorite. And that's, that's definitely me eating crow from, uh, <laughs> Listen, it's not over yet. It's a long season, but I, I do think yeah, don't give him his credit before he deserves it. No need right. for that. Yeah, exactly. You, you you don't want to eat any crow yet. You want to at least make sure that um, what I say actually comes to fruition.